This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And today we have some really, really bad news. <laughs> I like the, uh, that's an old saying, we just say in the Marine Corps, stand up, bend over, and kiss your butt goodbye. Because I think what we're going to be talking about today is the biggest crash in history coming. And the question is, I mean, it's bigger than what's happened. And the question is, how is it going to affect you personally? What are you, what are you going to do personally? But I think the biggest issue is how is it going to affect your family? And so we have this pandemic sitting out here. Um, it doesn't seem to be getting much better in Florida where Ted is and in Arizona where I am. They keep shutting down the economy. I don't know how much longer we can sustain that. And, you know, the uh, bills, uh, bills are backing up. The unemployed are happy. They're collecting their 600 a week. And um, pensions are going broke. We can't live in a better time than this. So our guest today is Ted Sedell. He is my co-author on the book, Who Stole My Pension? <laughs> and the reason Ted brings such wealth of knowledge. And you say, well, I don't really have a pension. I don't run a pension fund. But you've got to know how they steal from you. So when you read Who Stole My Pension, if you don't get upset and say, how can these bastards do this to me legally? That's really the issue. And then you got to say, well, how, what's the ripple effect from this? You know, that pension goes down. Like a lot of, a lot of California CalPERS, the biggest pension in America, goes down, it's going to be like an asteroid hitting planet Earth. And that's not, we're not that far away. So the real purpose of this show is to prepare for it. Our other guest is dear friend, fellow Hawaii resident who saw the light and left the Communist Republic of Hawaii, John McGregor. And John's been in the financial planning business talking to people about 401ks and IRAs and trying to get them to save themselves for years. Is the author of the 10 reasons, the top 10 reasons the rich go broke because they can't hear a thing he tells them anyway. They keep doing the same old thing. So today we're going to be talking about big pensions and small pensions. But more importantly, I, I want you to think about who is, how is it going to affect you? You know, I have family members with Jack, nothing. Nothing but they got college degrees, all of them. They're all smart people. So with that, so let's start with Ted. Ted, please introduce yourself and why you and I got together to write this book, that, uh, Who Stole My Pension? Yeah, thanks, Robert. Yeah, you and I decided, one of the things that we said early on was uh, we wanted to do a book about pensions, but what the world didn't need was a, was a book about pensions that no one would read. So we didn't want it to be an academic study or a oh. actuarial report, but something people could really get their hands, uh, get their minds around. Uh, and I think that's exactly what we gave them, a very uh, uh, insightful uh, action plan on what they can do. Yeah, but you, you made it human. You know, would you mind telling the story? Mark, now he was a UPS driver. And everybody thinks, you know, UPS drivers are set. He was set for life. And what happened to his UPS pension? Yeah, Mark was uh, Mark Green was a uh, is still a UPS driver has been for thirty years, and uh, he was looking at I think about a five thousand dollar a month pension when he retired, and he was going to retire pretty young in his uh, I think uh, early fifties. Yeah, he's still a young uh, man. I was yeah, surprised he, when I met him. Yeah, he's still he's you know a good looking young guy and uh, early fifties I'd say healthy. And uh, so he was looking forward to a nice uh, retirement in upstate New York. And, uh, but he was, his pension's what's called a multi-employer pension, which are some of the most vulnerable of them all. There are over 150, I think, that are scheduled to run out of money in the next 20 years. And his was one of the first. It got taken over by the federal government and his pension, the PBGC, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. And now his pension is, I believe, less than $1,000 a month. You can't live on that. Yeah. 
And so it's wife not happy. It's not a happy situation. So again, you know, the, I think what happens for people is that, well, I don't have one of those pensions, but somebody around you does. Yeah. And the thing to remember is state and local pensions. You're, if you're not a participant in a pension, you're still paying into it. If you're a taxpayer in the United States, you are paying into some state and local pension. Yeah. So it should matter to you. Even if you're not yeah. a, getting a pension benefit, you're paying the cost of that pension. Well, it's going to affect your families. I mean, I already know I have certain family members. They're, go they're going to be on my pension. <laughs> or maybe even moving in with you. God help me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy him a house before I did that. But anyway, it's, it's going to, it's, the ripple effect is really what I want people to listen to, you know, because we wrote about it in uh, Who Stole My Pension. The reason it affected me, my poor dad lost his pension and it affected the whole family because the guy was almost, almost on the street at 50. You know, he didn't have anything. It was a teacher's pension. And then my poor dad wanted me to fly for United Airlines. If I had flown for United Airlines, I would have joined my fellow pilots because what happened to the United Airlines pilots pension? Yeah, same thing. It was taken over by the federal government. It was one, it was the largest uh, takeover in history back in, uh, I think, 2006. So the government took over the pension and the, the pilots, which had, you know, pretty good pensions because they made the most money versus the flight attendants or the mechanics. Uh, but they saw, they took the biggest hit. So their pensions went from, I don't know, maybe a hundred thousand a year to 40,000 a year or, or even less. Um, so one of the concepts we talk about in the book is gross malpractice generally practice. And uh, most pensions uh, are mismanaged, grossly mismanaged. The investments are mismanaged. So they just don't have the, the kind of return they should. Yeah, so just hear me is that I talked to my peers who were all United Pilots. They were in retirement when they lost it. So now they're working and they're old guys and they got families, they got kids and they have to move in with the kids. So it, it's, it's a huge hit that you don't think about it until it happens to you. The reason I wanted to write the book with Ted, it happened to my father and it happened to my friends who flew for United Airlines. So and the pilots had it. Pilots had it rough because there was. You may remember this, Robert. There was a mandatory retirement of sixty. Yeah. So I think they changed that. They bumped it up a little. But it was if you uh, at age sixty, you were not legally allowed to work any longer right. for health. The concerns was that pilots would 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 die in the cockpit. So that was a real issue. Yeah, for the pilot. Well, that's that's why you, I want you to read "Who Stole My Pension" because you're going to find out it's going to affect a lot of people around you, especially today. I would want to be an airline pilot. I think they're going to furlough like 35, 40 percent of them. Mm -hmm. They're gone. They're toast. So anyway, it's that's how it's affected. We have John McGregor because a dear friend, neighbor from Hawaii, and all this, but he saw the light and left like me, the People's yeah. Republic of Hawaii. John, would you give us a little bit of background and why you wrote the book, The Top 10 Reasons Why the Risk Go Broke, and that you've been a financial planner for 25 years, and yeah. you've been, you've been uh, wasting your time for 25 years. Other than that, how, how's it going? <laughs> Pulling my hair out for 25 years, working with thousands of individuals, trying to get them to change their financial behaviors to, to no avail. Um, so I wrote the book purely out of frustration, just witnessing thousands of people that had everything and then lost it all. So although the book is about the rich, very alluring stories of people that I knew that had everything and then lost it all, it's really about why everyone goes broke or why so many people struggle financially. And it's a storybook. That's why I think it's been so popular. But you wrote it before COVID. Yeah. My question to you, John, has COVID, will COVID affect the rich again? I mean, I, oh. Oh, it's going to put this crisis on steroids. I mean, we were already suffering financially as a society before COVID. 78% of people were living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, I don't know what the statistic today is, given what COVID has done, but it's a rippling effect. And I say, my, you know, there couldn't have been a better time for my book, but I will say, I don't think there's a better time for your book, Who Stole My Pension? 
And whether you're sitting out there thinking, well, I don't have a pension, so how is this going to affect me? I'll tell you, whether you have a pension or not, it's going to affect everyone in society worldwide. This isn't just a U.S. thing. Yeah, as, as Ted points out, there are 2 billion baby boomers retiring right now worldwide. And pensions all over the world are broke. Correct. And the, other, the only way they're going to solve this problem is by raising everyone's taxes. So our taxes are going to go through the roof because of this crisis. So it will affect everyone, regardless of your income, your age, or whether you have a pension or not. Are you a, are you a Democrat? You're going to vote for Biden? So oh, Biden. my goodness. <laughs> I'm independent, but I will tell you, a Biden presidency will just, our country will be unrecognizable, <laughs> sadly. Let me, let me explain something. The reason I got involved in this is because when I started looking at pensions due to the United Airlines pilots, my, class, my classmates, and then my father, the thing that I thought was really strange, and the reason I, I, um, I enjoy talking to you, I met Ted a little over a year ago now, it's what I didn't understand was how could the stock market since 2008 be going up and pensions were going down? In other words, it was the best 10 years, 2008 till approximately 2020 today, when I started looking into it was 2018. How could so much money be going into like the S&P and all 500 and all this, the pensions were being depleted. And that's why Ted has a sophistication for those who really want to understand how pensions get looted. How, was, how were they able to do that, Ted? How was the stock market going up, but pension going down? Yeah, we had the longest historic bull market in history, 11 years. And uh, pension benefits throughout that 11 year period were being cut. After 08, over 50% of all the state and local pensions had their benefits cut during worldwide. the worldwide. worldwide. Yeah, during the greatest financial mark, bull market in history. So one of the things I tell people, and we tell them in the book, is that uh, if in the good years, your pension benefits get cut, guess what's going to happen in the <laughs> coming bad years? <laughs> you know, things are only going to get worse. And I will tell you that the probably 99% of the people who have a pension can look forward to having their pension cut in the future. Someone is sitting down right now figuring out how to screw them out of their pension, either the corporation trying to cut costs or state and local politicians trying to cut costs. Someone is actively working on it right now. Okay, so, so, so I want you guys to solve this puzzle. Stock market going up, pension going down. Interesting. So, John, I mean, you've been in the market for years. You're very, very good at it. Do you have any idea how that's happening? Well, in terms of the pension, I mean, a significant portion of the pension assets are invested in fixed income or bonds. And a lot of these are high yield bonds, which means they are junk bonds. Junk. And when bonds are paying next to zero, that's like a 300 pound jockey on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so you're never going to get the assumptive uh, returns that these pensions are, are assuming that they're going to get. I mean, I think, Ted, correct me if I'm wrong, CalPERS still has a 7.5% projected return on their pension. I think that's right. It might be down to seven and a quarter now, but it's way up there. Yeah. It's, and, then, and, and I just read they're going to increase the leverage. In other correct. words, they, they couldn't get seven that they were getting, let's say, two. So what they're gonna do is back up, you know, that's like saying, I'm gonna mortgage my house because the price- What could possibly go, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Correct, and then when they, when they make these promises to so many retirees to retire at 90% of their final pay at age 55 in a declining market, the math just simply does not add up. But, this, but, this, but wait, it gets worse. <laughs> Most it's of the pensions worse. that we're talking about, at least Ted's talking about, are police, firefighters, and school teachers. And the police are retiring in droves, right, Ted? Yeah. But the, <laughs> the real reason that the, the pensions are in such trouble are, again, gross malpractice generally practiced. The management of the investments is terrible. What That's you're saying, it hasn't, 
You're saying it hasn't changed. It's gotten worse. Oh, it's gotten worse. What it's gotten worse because the gambling is is getting more extreme. Yeah. The more underfunded they are, the more risks they take on. Correct. And the reason that's important to know is I'll say it again when when I got together with Ted a couple of years ago now. The stock market was going up. Mom and pop were really happy. That was John's gang, you know, the 401k IRA gang. But when I was talking to Ted, my friends are getting ripped off left and right. The police officers, teachers, firefighters, airline pilots are getting sucked out. And so John's sitting there and he's talking to affluent people. I mean, his book, The Top 10 Reasons Why They're Rich Go Broke. A lot of them go broke because their kids are idiots, right, John? <laughs> Well, and the parents, <laughs> everyone's financially illiterate and it just transfers down to generation after generation after generation. That's the problem. And people assume everything's going to be right. I mean, we talked about United Airlines. I've worked with flight attendants, pilots, and high-level executives at United Airlines. And they all thought, this is United Airlines. Are you kidding me? This is the greatest airline on the planet. We're worldwide. We're going to be, we're going to be traveling, uh, transporting people forever. And then what? 9-11 hit and all chips were off the table. I had a very high level executive as a client at United Airlines and they spent money like they were invincible. And then again, 9-11 hit, they had an employee stock options. They were ruined. And I'm still hearing this today. You know, as a result of my book, I got people coming up to me all the time and say, well, I've got a pension. It's guaranteed. My husband's a firefighter. I'm a teacher. It's in writing. It's a contract. They promised me. And I just say, look, if there's no money, there's no money. Well, well, that's, so that's why Ted is here is because, but wait, it got worse. I think in one of the Kentucky state pension, let's say they need a hundred dollars to cover the pension. They only had $15 in there. So to pay that, you know, if, they, if the pension had to be executed today, they came up 85 bucks short. But today I think it's down to six bucks now. I mean, the, it's gotten worse. So it's bad news, but it actually makes who stole my pension and John's book, Why the Rich Are Going Broke, Top 10 Top Reasons, more valuable today. Any comments on that, Ted? Well, yeah, you're right. The, uh, we had uh, Chris Toby, who is a former board member of the Kentucky pension system, tell us that it's, their funding is now going below, he's, he estimates it'll go below 10%. So they have whether it's six cents or nine cents on the dollar that they that they owe, and and so that uh, is probably going to be the next pension collapse you hear about will be Kentucky. But if you're in a pension, if you've been get promised a pension, you should know at this point that those promises are worth little or nothing. Half of these state and local pensions have been cut already since 08, and corporate pensions are being cut. So you oh. really need to watch that pension, guard well, it. It's, it's more than attack. the pension. It's a thing you say, the PBGC, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which is a quasi-insurance that says, well, if your pension goes broke, the PG, PBGC yeah. will cover the teacher's pension. But there's one big problem. What's the problem with the PBGC, Ted? It's $54 billion in the red. <laughs> That's that's the problem. You know, you've got a, yeah, the good news is you've got an insurance policy. The bad news is your insurance company's broke. So, so it's a really a worthless uh, guarantee. And uh, then that problem is only going to get worse when these multi-employer pensions, over a hundred of them get taken over in the next few years. So when we come back, you know, the, we got some more bad news for you. And the reason I want to give you as much bad news for you is hopefully some of you will get off your ass. I, we wouldn't be writing, I wouldn't write the book with Ted and I wouldn't be encouraged to, John to write the book because John is from mom and pop and Ted writes for the big corporations guys. But this, they're in the same problem. So I want to scare the hell out of you. So we're going to come and we're going to say, I'm going to ask Ted, what does his crystal ball say? And John's going to say, what does his crystal ball say? We're not going to patty cake you and blow smoke up your butt. But I'll give you it as hard and as bad as possible. We'll be right back. Welcome to Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news. Well, it's all bad news today, so pay, pay attention. 
You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube. And leave us a review whenever you can. <coughs> all of our programs, all of our podcasts are archived at richdadradio.com. Several reasons for that is because it's important. Number two is that if you listen to this program again, you'll pick up even more because repetition is how we learn. But three, more importantly, if you have one of these people and say, well, my pension is guaranteed or I have a 401k living with you, I would just take them, drag them down to richdadradio.com and say, we're going to listen to this and we're going to discuss this because that's why we do this show. We don't need to scare the crap out of you. So anyway, you can, if you have a question, you can also use hashtag AskRichDad on social media. But we're, we're doing our best to tell you the situation has gotten worse since I helped John write his book, The Ten Top Reasons Why the Rich Go Broke. And the situation has got much more worse when Ted and I wrote Who Stole My Pension? And that book only came out in January. But COVID hit in January. And the whole world economy changed. So if you think, oh, don't worry, happy days are here again, I don't know what you're smoking, but it may not affect you. That's the biggest point here, but it's going to affect somebody nearby you. And that's why I want you to pay attention and all this. So, Ted, like most people think their pension is guaranteed, but really what many pensions have is an insurance policy, and that insurance policy is the PBGC, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which we all knew was going to go broke eventually anyway, but it went accelerated broke. But could you tell the audience what it was like to negotiate with the PBGC and my friends, the United Airline Pilots? Yeah, we met, uh, I was invited by uh, two congressmen and the U.S. Airline Pilot Union I mean, sorry, the United Airlines Pilots Union in 2006 to meet with the senior staff of the PBGC. And the pilots wanted to know what caused their pension to collapse. They wanted a forensic investigation done. And the PBGC told us that they had taken over over a thousand pensions. This is back in 2006. They had already it's taken before over- Before 2008. Yes, this was before, this is 14 years ago. They said they had taken over, over a thousand, over, sorry, over 4,000 pensions and never once investigated what caused these pensions to fail. And we said, we'll, we want to do that here. The pilots want that done. They believe every dead pension deserves an autopsy, right? And it's, you know, their entire retirement dreams were held in this pension and which is now was being they were being told is dead so they wanted an autopsy done the pbgc said they had no interest in finding out what caused this pension to fail and so they denied the request oh is that is that kind of why jeffrey epstein is dead because nobody wants to know who he was doing business with <laughs> yeah <laughs> So they, you know, I couldn't believe that they wouldn't want to know what the best way to keep pensions from failing is to know what causes them to fail. Right. But they said, we don't want to know about that. We, that's not our job. Our job is just to take over these pensions and let the corporation off the hook. Yeah. And, so, and, and F, FY, FYI, Ted is a biggest, was, he's a former SEC attorney because he saw it from the government side. But when he realized that the SEC or the PBGC was going to do nothing, he became the largest whistleblower in America. And now he lives comfortably on his pension that came from pensions. <laughs> I don't know how many millions you put in your pocket suing those bastards. But anyway, it was, you, you did well, the autopsy. You know, doing the work, of, doing the autopsy work, the forensic investigations of failed pensions, you see all the bad actors. So I was able to, over the last 25 years, accumulate all this knowledge about who's ripping who off, what Wall Street firms are, are ripping people off. And then when the SEC created financial incentives under the whistleblower program in like after Dodd-Frank, I could monetize all of that knowledge that I've been accumulated over the years through doing these autopsies. So if you, if you are, by the way, in a pension that's being cut 
or eliminated, you should demand an aut- autopsy. Yeah, call, you know, just contact Ted and he'll, he'll either he'll do it or he'll, he knows who's going to do it for you. So anyway, that's that's why Mark Green is part of who stole my pension is because they called Ted in to say, well, how did they steal our money? Okay, so now we have John who is on the other side, which is the 401k IRA side. And like I said, you know, the thing that I was wondering, how could the stock market be going up, but pensions going down? So John, um, what do you know about that? But how many people with 401ks and IRAs are now in more serious trouble? And they were, they looked pretty rich a few months ago because of COVID-19. Yeah, well, we've seen, we've seen the market come back quite a bit since COVID and it's really because the Fed's been printing monopoly money and the stock market's just betting on the Fed to continue to do so. I see a train wreck coming at the end of this month, if not early early August, when you have the $600 a week benefit ending, student debt relief ending, uh, mortgage debt relief ending, and this COVID crisis, which the media will just, will not let go. I see a collision course headed in the market very soon. And that's going to affect, again, of course, the pensions, but of course, also 401k balances as well. So this, this false sense that your, your, your 401k balance has increased, I would just be very prepared for what's about to happen, especially as we get closer to the election. Anyway, so crystal ball time. Ted, what do you see? It can make it up. I mean, just we're going to say, <laughs> anything about the future is not a lie. It's just your crystal ball. Well, you've got state and local governments who have been taking a huge hit as a result of COVID. And so those pensions are going to be in real trouble. And their tax collections down. Uh, yeah, their tax collections are down. All of their, their revenues are, are down. And they've got to fund these pensions. So that's a, that's a real issue. The same thing on the corporate side. The corporations are not earning as much as they used to because of COVID. So they're going to try to trim their pension costs. That's a fixed cost. They can cut that cost even if they can't boost their revenues. So you're going to see COVID hitting corporations and their pensions and governments and their pensions. And so it's going to be a a very difficult time. So let's let's say I'm working for ABC Corporation. I'm 50 years old and I got 10 more years to retirement, what would you say about the, your corporate pension? Well, if you've been promised a pension and you're counting on a pension, you need to be watching that every minute now more than ever and strategizing about what to do. Because I can assure you, there is a consultant at that corporation or at that municipality who's, who's advising them, the people running your pension, yeah. How they can but, the, but also that's but, but also point Ted, the point is that's where they contact somebody like you because the smoke screen they're gonna run into is so massive. I mean the smoke screen in John's business with mutual funds and ETFs and all that stuff, they'll never get through. You'll they don't give a crap. So the point here is this that's why it, you just wanna prepare for what's coming. So John, what do you see in your crystal ball with your rich clients? Web yeah, I, I think I think an overall theme of this, which ties into your book, is what you're aware of, you can control, but what you're not of, not aware of will control you. And the more you're aware of what's going on in the economy, in the pension and the stock market, the more you can prepare for plan plan B. And and I seriously think people should really be thinking about plan B. If they're 50 years old, they've got a, they, they think they have a pension. They need to start planning for a future where they're generating additional income somewhere else to offset what they're not not going to get with their pension or their 401k. Okay, so it's crystal ball time for me. You know, like uh, Kim and I own about 8,000 rental units. Now, if if they don't they don't hand out those $600 checks, a forbearance kicks in. A forbearance means that they they're, they're going to keep rolling the mortgages forward. And then forbearance leads to foreclosures on 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 houses especially. But if, and what I'm saying is if they don't bail this whole thing out, the trouble is how big would that bailout have to be? How big would it have to be? There's a thing called CMBS, is commercial mortgage-backed securities. 
They're like the loans on the um, office buildings and shopping centers and all that. They're broke. Can the Fed bail them out plus the pensions, plus mom and pop? who lose their jobs, they could be 40, 50 years old, three kids, a mortgage. How big is this tsunami going to be? Any idea, John? Well, we just saw in June, 30% of uh, mortgage payers didn't miss their mortgage payment. Is that number going up or down? I mean, I think anyone would say that number is going to get even worse. So I think, I think people really need to waken, waken up to what's going to happen particularly when you have the media that's going to pile on and make this crisis as worse as they possibly can to destroy the economy. It's going to be Trump's fault anyway. So, yep. well, there, Ted, Ted how, ba- how bad can it get for mom and pop? Well, there are two things I've mentioned, Robert. Yeah. One is getting back to the 401k problem. Uh, the average 401k balance for a 65 year old was something like, $35,000 pre COVID. The num- numbers are thrown around anywhere from, from zero to maybe 65,000, but very little, your average 65 year old had almost nothing saved in his 401k for retirement pre COVID. And so that's only going to get worse. And now the sec has just proposed new rules to allow riskier investments into 401k, which are called uh, private equity investments, which mm-hmm. are the highest cost, highest risks investments ever devised by Wall Street. It'll cause 401k costs to go from maybe a half a percent or 1% to four, six, 8% a year. Huge costs. But so the, that's a big concern. The private equity guys are the ones who went to the fund managers of the states and said these private equity, basically, I don't know what you call them anymore, but That's what drained the public pensions anyway, right? Exactly. And here we have the chairman of the SEC, Jay Clayton, Trump's appointee, approving private equity for mom and pops in their 401ks. This is a real prescription for disaster. And it's coming at a time when over the last 10 years, private equity has been devastating to pensions. Oh, this is a them blind. Yeah, it's, it's, this is the, the track record here is, is just horrendous. And to now expose mom and pops is to private equity is what I, in my article in Forbes, I called it that the, the SEC was throwing 401ks to the wolves. Another thing that when, what John said earlier was that the CEOs of our biggest corporations have taken their corporations from AAA bonds down to B's and C's. So the credit rating of the biggest corporations in America are down, like Ford, AT&T, they're a toast. So anyway, yeah, let's get on it, huh? What's that? I wouldn't be surprised to see the SEC approving buying lottery tickets in four four <laughs> I mean, why not? Why not, really? You know, if, if I could share just a little behind the scenes, I've done a lot of pension consulting, working with company pensions, nonprofit organizations, and union plans. They'd hire me to either provide overall consulting or manage a sleeve of their investments. Most of the committee, most of the investment committee have no idea. They have no knowledge of investments. They couldn't, they couldn't tell the difference between a stock and a bond. And too many times they get together on a quarterly basis for one big boondoggle. It's a nice fancy lunch and then they go off and play golf. And almost every single time when I came and I had to present the performance of the, of the portion that I was managing. I can't tell you how many times I was told, hey, John, you've got two minutes for your report because we've got a tea time at noon. The amount of mismanagement of these funds, like Ted says, is just criminal in my, in my opinion. And it's only gonna get worse. So if I could give you a, um, a little commercial plug here is, you know, you can go to my Twitter account the real Kiyosaki. And I always recommend the same thing, you know, as save gold, silver, Bitcoin, because I think they're going to print. That's the only reason I say that. But, I, but also, I think you need plan Bs. How, how are you going to generate income? Mm-hmm. So on Twitter, you know, I cover some ideas and all that. The problem is most people 
are like deer in the headlight, right? They're just, no, no, it's going to come back. You know, Trump will save me. Biden will save me. Ocasio-Cortez will save me. But I think that we're heading into the biggest disaster I've ever seen. Mm. I've, you know, that when, when the pensions that Ted talks about are underwater $7 trillion, let me give you an idea how long it takes to print a trillion dollars. It takes less than a minute, 12 keystrokes. But if you were to spend a trillion dollars at $1 a second, so let's say I give Ted a trillion dollars, so he can spend a trillion dollars, but you have to spend it at $1 dollar a second, it would take him 34,000 years. And in the last few months, the pensions have gone short, just for the public guys, by $7 trillion. That's a lot of money to me. Yeah. So that's why it's gold over Bitcoin right now. But just as a pure hedge, a defense mechanism. But really, it's time to be more creative and figure out how you can generate more. You know, something else. So anyway, I'll tell you how we get a hold of Ted and John. John, how's the best way for people to get hold of you? Yeah, thanks, Robert. Um, real pleasure today. They can reach me at uh, my website, johnmacgregor.net, and it's M-A-C-G-R-E-G-O-R.net. Okay, and Ted? Yeah, they can reach me through my either my website, benchmarkalert.com, or the Sedell Law Offices is my other website, dot .com. And spell Sidel? S-I-E-D-L-E. Okay. And, uh, this is the book. So I encourage them to go out and get it. We have actually a yeah. chapter on John's point, which is called The People Running Your Pension Have No Investment Training. That's the name of the chapter. <laughs> it's horrifying. Yeah. Do you, you have a picture of your book, John? I do. Thank you, Robert. Yep, right here. The Top 10 Reasons the Rich Go Broke. Powerful Stories that will transform your financial life forever. And, I, and the reason I'm pumping them is it's gotten worse since the books come out. The books were terrifying as it was, but it's gotten worse. And I think a little terror right now might be useful. Not for long, but a little bit of terror would be useful. Another thing, Ted, you also just wrote an article in Forbes. Yeah, I wrote an article about uh, the, the, for, the private equity in 401ks, which I really, a couple of articles about it, which I really encourage people to read because this is brand new. It's never been allowed before in history, high risk. And uh, it's something you should pay attention to because it'll sneak into your 401k through a target date fund. You may not even notice it's there, mm -hmm. but there's some big changes going on in 401ks that investors should be worried about. Uh, and what Ted is talking about is what's drained the public pensions. So what they did to the public pensions, they're now doing to 401ks and IRAs. Mm -hmm. And that's what was so, that was what was so remarkable about the SEC chairman's comments in approving this new investment. He said, ordinary investors should have the right to invest in the same crap. He didn't say crap. The same investments that the big boy pensions. And I was, my head almost blew up. Yeah, they, the big boy pensions invested in these terrible deals and they exploded. So now in fairness, we want to let mom and pop get into this game? Ridiculous, made no sense. Why not? And the only winner is Wall Street. Yep. Yeah. Well, as Ted, Ted and I say in the back of Who's Told My Pension, What's America's number one export? Toxic assets that steal your wealth. And they're doing it more and more and more. They export them all over the world. So anyway, I, I wanna thank you guys. You know, I've done my, we, we've done our best to scare the crap out of you. You know, for 20 bucks, you can buy John's book and 20 bucks, you can buy Ted's book. You don't have to read it, just put it under your pillow and you'll have nightmares all night. <laughs> but at least, at least you'll be more aware than mom and pop right now who, is, who are wondering when their $600 a month check will show up. Okay, so thanks, you guys. Thank you so much. Great to see you guys. Okay, all right. And we'll be Take right care. back. Okay, so this is the final recap. Yeah, we just shut down, but Ted had brought up another point while we're on the break. I want you to understand they robbed the pensions of police officers, firefighters, school teachers, and government employees. 
and they robbed them via this thing called private equity. And now that the coronavirus has hit, what's happening, Ted? This is the final word on this one. Well, what was amazing in the press release that the Department of Labor and the SEC put out, they said, we're going to allow mom and pop to invest in private equity as corona relief. The idea is mom and pop can recover from their corona losses by going to Vegas and gambling on private equity. It was su such a disingenuous lie uh, to call it Corona relief. Hey, John, what call, said. John, call up all your 401k clients and tell them relief is on the way. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Unbelievable. <laughs> Put a 10 on it and call it a circus. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you. And thank you all thank uh, you so much. Community for listening to what we say. I hope we scared the crap out of you. Just get two books, study a little bit, and you may take evasive action because this baby is coming down. Thank you very much. Thank you.